I'm curious. I'm curious as to what you're curious about and whether you've considered the power of curiosity. Now, children are wonderfully curious. They do say the average four-year-old asks around 300 questions every single day. That's around 100,000 questions that the average parent or carer has to deal with. As we get into adulting, however, our sense of curiosity seems to lessen as our mortgage payments increase. Becoming curious is not quite the same as demanding an answer to a question, which in a formal situation, such as a courtroom, could feel threatening or it could put pressure on us. When we ask a question with a spirit of curiosity, it suggests that we're inquisitive. We're interested. There's a sense of hope. Dr. Zach Bush, MD, said, curiosity is the most powerful force on the planet. If we want any kind of behaviour change in our life, then we need a sense of possibility. We need that sense of hope. If we want behaviour change, then we need curiosity. Now, there are things that I'm not curious about. I don't have a very big bandwidth for scientific facts, and I will never understand the offside rule in football. But when it comes to my own life, to how much better it might be, of course I'd love a sense of possibility, a sense of wonder and awe. And I do believe when we're ready to make some kind of behaviour change, when we're ready to face our fears and let go of limiting beliefs, curiosity can be very powerful. It enables us to explore what it is we want without the fear of failure without the fear of judgment, because we haven't necessarily committed to anything other than being curious. In my work with people who are ditching the booze, we use curiosity a lot. You've probably heard the term sober curious. In the sober club that I run, we work with people not at rock bottom who are clinically dependent, but the potentially millions of people who are drinking more than they want to. The term is grey area drinkers, as I referenced in my previous TEDx talk, Sobriety Rocks Who Knew. Becoming sober curious can make a really big difference for people. It enables them to just dip their toes into the sober scene. They can listen to some podcasts, they can read some books about quitting, quitlet. They can explore without that fear of failure and judgment, because they've only committed to being sober curious. Why is behaviour change often so difficult for us? Well, our unconscious mind likes us to do what we've always done. It really likes predictability. If we want behaviour change, we need to introduce that sense of possibility, that sense of hope. If we want behaviour change, we need that curiosity. What often lies behind any kind of addiction or imbalance is a lack of self-love and self-esteem. Now, most of us have a very strong inner critic. It's that voice that says, you're not enough. You're weak. You will never be able to ditch those habits. You'll never achieve your goals. You're weak. Sadly, no amount of just reciting affirmations is going to help. Despite the late, great Louise Hay, founder of Hay House Publishing, suggesting that all of us carry a mirror in our bra or our top pocket so that we can whip it out and say, I love you. It doesn't work. Our unconscious mind says, I don't believe you. What we can do, though, is become self-love curious. I love the analogy of the elephant, the rider, and the path. It's a tool created by psychologist Jonathan Haidt. So imagine, if you will, a huge elephant, perhaps resplendent with colorful drapes. That represents our emotional brain. Now imagine a rider sitting on top of the elephant. That represents our rational brain. 
Now, it would seem, when we see this image, that the rider is very much in control, holding the reins, guiding the elephant, determining the path. But the reality is, if the elephant got scared, if something kicked off, then the sheer tonnage and determination would mean the rider is instantly thrown off course. This lovely analogy shows us that our emotional brain and our rational brain must happily coexist. They do say emotions, not logic, inspire action. But in truth, if we want behaviour change, we need both. We do need the rationale, we do need the logic, so that we know why we're making the change. But we also need the motivation. We need the emotional piece. We need that sense of hope and excitement so that we can keep our elephant happy. In my case, when I first stopped drinking, I definitely had the rationale and the logic. I knew that alcohol was bad for me. I knew it was linked to 200 different illnesses. I knew it was time. I had the willpower. I had the determination. I set myself a challenge. But when I found myself in a situation where I felt wobbly, it started to feel a little different. My unconscious mind said, you deserve a reward. Everyone around me said, what on earth are you doing? Don't be so boring. Have a drink like you always do. That seemed to work for the last 30 years. The sober shamers told me, reach for a drink. Before long, the wine witch appeared in my ear. Just have one. And I was straight back down the slippery slope of the booze elevator. Becoming sober curious enabled me to look at it differently. I was able to drip feed curiosity into my unconscious mind and explore the sober scene without judgment. I immersed myself in inspirational podcasts and books about quitting. I tried some alcohol-free drinks. I surrounded myself with people who were supportive. I was able to focus not on what I was gaining, uh, giving up, but only on what I was gaining. So back to that analogy of the elephant, the rider, and the path. I did have that rational brain piece. I did have the logic in place. But I was also able to keep my elephant happy. I had that sense of excitement. I had that sense of hope. Now, you might be thinking, with all this talk of curiosity, isn't this inherently dangerous? Didn't curiosity kill the cat? Well, for every proverb, there is an antidote. And you may have also heard the phrase, curiosity killed the cat, satisfaction brought it back. And later, Michael J. Fox said, Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it sure saved my ass. Curiosity takes the pressure off. It enables us to ask questions, to ask the questions that we want an answer to without the fear of failure, without the fear of judgment. It enables a sense of possibility, a sense of hope. So I challenge you to ask yourself many questions. Ask yourself, could my life be better physically and emotionally without the booze or the sugar or the cigarettes? Could I love and accept myself? What does happiness look like for me? What legacy do I want to leave behind? If the answer to any of these questions is, I don't know, or even, where would I start? Rather than berating yourself for not yet knowing, simply become curious. Hashtag, let curiosity be your superpower. Thank you.